See, when you got the scans and stuff, obviously we'll touch on Harvey's disabilities, but was yeah. there any telltale signs through the scans? Nothing. Best pregnancy I've ever had. Best easiest pregnancy in fact he didn't want to come out i was three weeks late and they had to induce me he's quite happy in my belly by the sounds of things uh best pregnancy um they said he would be small but then when he come out he was 8 13 he wasn't small and they said if they knew he was that big they would have given me a cesarean because my hips were small worst pain ever ever um so i had him my mum and that told Dwight that I was going into labour because I just never would want my child to be like, why well, didn't involve my dad? I didn't want him in the room with me when I was given birth. I had my mum and my best friend. But even after, he was at the hospital, but he didn't even want to cut the cord, so my dad cut it. Why didn't he want to cut the cord? Don't know. And then when he did see him, he was like, what are these bruises on him? Because they looked like bruises on him, on Harvey. And I was really like taken back. Oh, I've just given birth. What do you mean there's bruises? But they're called Mongolian blue spots. If you're mixed race, you, they, they're called Mongolian blue spots. You get them, they look like bruises on you. Um, and that was it really. I think he's seen Harvey about nine times in his life. Um, I don't think he liked it that I was with Pete. So I remember one time we was in the car, he was in the back and he said to Pete, it should be me in the front there, you in the back. It was a bit like, oh. So I don't know if it's because he couldn't have me or half till this day, I never know. I've tried to send him pictures of Harvey on Instagram. Harvey playing the piano just ignores everything. Just doesn't want to know. But the door's always open. Still? Always. Why? Um, For Harvey? Because, I don't know, because I'm like that. I'm like... um. Really, I should say, fuck off, you arsehole. You don't deserve it and you've not been part of it. Because I don't know, I just think if he saw half and saw how amazing he is, for him to be like, fucking hell, I've, I haven't seen my, like, it's his biological son. Any man can make a baby, but it takes a real man to be a dad in my eyes. But it's still his biological son. And I suppose to prove him wrong that, because when he found out he was blind and all of this, he was like, oh, well, he'll never play golf. he never play football because of you. And it's like, well, it's not my fault, is it? I've well, done all the tests at Great Ormond Streets for their, um, when they do all these tests when things are abnormal and stuff. So they can use it for experiments or finding out things. Just don't know why it happened, don't know. Just one of them things. And then none of my other kids have been like, it's just one of them things, I don't know. When did you start seeing there was telltale signs that something might have been a bit of mess with Harvey at the start? Um, when he was, have you got kids? You've got kids. Yeah, you know two, when the health I'll visitors kids, come yeah. up? Yeah. I can't bear health visitors, but anyway. Oh. Um, six weeks old, they sort of say, has he done his social smile? Basically, when they look at you and go, ah, whether it's wind or not. You know, sometimes when they have wind, they do that smile. <laughs> and... Uh, I said, I don't really know, really. And they're like, because I had like a mobile thing for him, you know, of the things that hang. And she said, does he follow it? I said, well, no, not really. So she put a torch in his eye and he wasn't following the torch. So she said, oh, it, boys can be a bit delayed, but maybe go and see your GP. And then from them, I thought, oh, here we go. What's it, it's for her to say that. So when I saw Dr. Khan, our doctor, still family doctor, and he looked in his eyes, he went, yeah, Kate, this this isn't really normal for this age. I think it was about eight weeks then by the time I got the appointment. So he said, go to Moorfields Eye Hospital in Brighton. So I went with my mum, sitting there in the reception room. You know, you've got other people in there, you know, like in a doctor's surgery, you sit there like, oh, I want to be next. So we took Harvey in. I can't I think his name was Professor Moore. And I remember sitting there with my mum and he was getting all his stuff out, looking in his eyes. And then suddenly he just went as blatant as this. Yeah, he's blind. Yeah, he's blind. And me and my mum looked at each other like, well, is he definitely blind? He went, yeah, he's blind. And we're like, right. He goes, yeah, so sorry about that. And we just sat there like, right. And that was it. We just left the room. No like oh, we can give you advice or there's these people you want to talk. I don't know. We walked out the, the room like, that is blind. Like, now what? 
Like we were just left in limbo. Like we've just been told he's blind. It, just like that. You know when you go and see a doctor and it's like, yeah, he's blind. And then we come out, we're like, he's blind. And then on the way home, we're like, my mum was like really upset. But I still couldn't believe like he's blind. What, that means they never walk? Will he walk? Will he need a stick? What, what happens? Like you don't expect to hear like blind, like well, you just don't know. And then when you look at him, then you could sort of see his eyes because they sort of moved a little bit different. And it just made me love him more, to be honest, because I'd look at him and think, oh, I'm going to protect you so much more. I wouldn't let anyone hold him. I was very like, no, he's mine. I'd only let certain people hold him. I was like obsessed. He'd come everywhere with me. Um, but then you would notice his eyes. And then as he got a bit older, no, the hospital admitted because he started drinking a lot of water. And then my mum found these charities, Blatchington Court, and they're with kids who are blind, disabilities and stuff. So we had drop-in sessions, and it was only talking to the other mums that they said, um, oh, I bet he's got SOD, which means septic optic dysplasia. And they're like, is he drinking a lot of water and all of that as well? Because that's what happened with our son. You need to go and see um, a doctor called... Um, Dr. Titania, Great Ormond Street, but you need to be referred by your doctor. So we did that. So Harvey at this point was about six, seven months old. So we took him there and straight away, Dr. Titania said he's got SOD. We'll give you this medication, this medication. And we're like, how is this not picked up by um, the doctors? So Brighton, they wrote, wrote us a letter and admitted when they did an MRI scan on Harvey, they were looking at the eye, the optic um, nerve, and on it showed his pituitary gland, which is the front line gland at the front of your brain, and it was abnormal, but they didn't pick up on it. And if they did, they would have given them the medication to not starve him as much, as much so he wouldn't have been how he is today. Does that make sense? Mm. But we didn't sue them because we're like, well, we, it, it's happened now, and we need the NHS for him. And then as he got a bit old, he didn't walk. He used to just sit there, not talk. I suppose he'd just sit there like that and you'd give him things in his hands to try and play with. And then we'd, my mum would find someone to come up to help stimulate him with his eyes, this, that sounds. So he just didn't walk till, he was in a wheelchair, I think, till he was about 11. Um, and then we found out he was autistic when he was about four. So he didn't speak. Um, I used to make his clothes because he was so fat. I couldn't, and luckily I like sewing. I've got three sewing machines, something that no one knows about me. I make the curtains in my house. Um, so I used to just, just make him elastic waist, waisted, um, elastic waisted tracksuit bottoms because he'd be in size 14 year old bottoms from the middle, but obviously they're too long. So I'd make his tracksuits and stuff, but he just used to sit there and just not do anything just make the odd noise, but then he taught me his language. Um, and it went on from there, didn't eat. He'd only like certain foods. And I think we just kept doing everything we can to stimulate his eyes, stimulate them. And now he can definitely see something because he knows all his colors and does drawings. So I think his typo is, reads 48, I think it is. Like his iPad he holds here. So I used to be worried about his eyes. And then my mum looked into stem cells. And then I said, do you know what, mum? Harvey doesn't know any different. So why would you want to put a pair of new eyeballs in his eyes? That would probably freak him out because he's got so used to how he is now. But my problem with him now is not his eyes, it's his behaviour. Because now he's got ADHD, opposite deficit disorder, Prada willies, which he's never full up. So he just wants to eat, so it affects his behaviour. He's cortisol deficient, so you have to watch the amount of water that he has. Basically, he's on medication for life. If he doesn't take it, he'll die. Other than that, yeah, his eyes aren't the problem. It's the other side. Mm -hmm. But if you see him in the house, he walks around as if he knows the house. But as soon as you take him outside, then you notice it because he's like that on the ground, holds you like. Mm -hmm. But I wouldn't change anything about him. I wouldn't change anything because he lives like a king.